What's up guys, my name is Dari and I hope that you have a great day because we're going to add an image upload to our cars. Because of you guys, I've reached something very special that I never ever dreamed about reaching in one year. This channel got over 5k subscribers in 2020 and I can't thank every single person that watches my videos enough. I want to do a simple $50 Amazon gift card giveaway and there's not a lot that you need to do. I recently created an Instagram account which I have linked in the description down below. And this is not a sponsored giveaway by Amazon and this has nothing to do with YouTube. I just want to give something back to the people that supported me. The only thing that you need to do is to follow me on Instagram, write down why you think that you should need to win the giveaway on my latest post. And if you have any ideas of a giveaway item that I could do in the future, just write it down as well. I don't need any personal data of you and the giveaway will end on the 8th of February. Alright, let's get into the actual content. What we've done so far was adding text, numbers, dates, and some other data types to our database. Now, there's also a matter of file uploads to consider. So what our goal eventually is, is, well, let me go to the UI, add a new car, is to basically add a new button right here where users could upload their image. Let's rewind for a second. What are the steps that we need to perform in order for this to work? Step number one is to add a button, like I said, right here, where we could search for an image right inside our computer or laptop. Step number two is to use the request object that we have right inside of our controller, right here, to upload the image. And step number three is to validate the upload. Now, for the last step, we need to save the image somewhere in our application, and then we need to send back the image name to the database. Not the image itself, but just the name. So first things first, let's go to our resources, views, cars, create.blade.php, and right above our first input field that we have, where we're asking for the brand name, let's copy it, and let's paste it right above. And let me actually zoom in one more time. All right. Now for the input, the type needs to be equal to a file because we're going to upload something. Now let's change the name to image, and we don't need a placeholder. So let's get rid of that as well. The class could be the same. So let's save it, go to Chrome, refresh the page. And this is all right for now. I don't need anything fancy because this video isn't dedicated to perfect styling. That will be done whenever I create a complete project. But before we continue on to our controller, there's one more thing that we need to add right here. Let's go to our code again. What we need to do is to tell our form that we're posting an image. So the data needs to be encoded. And to do that, we need to add a new attribute to our form. So right inside our form, we have our action method. So right after our method, let's hit a space. Let's write down ENC type is equal to, well, double quotes. And you can see the options appearing on my screen. And what we need is multi-part forward slash form dash data. All right, let's save it because step number one is done. Now for step number two, we need to use the request object and do something with it inside the controller. But before we do that, we need to make some adjustments to our database. Like I said, our goal is not to save the image in the database, but instead we want to save the path of our image. So if we go to our CLI and to our MySQL, you can see that we have our ID, name, founded, description, created at, updated at, but we need a new column that will print out a string with our image path. Since we already have data inside our table, we need to create a new migration. So let's go to the other tab. Let's write down PHP artisan, make me a migration called at underscore image underscore two underscore cars underscore table. All right, it has been created. Let's open it. Migrations, and it's always the last one. So for our up method, we only need to add one column. So let's remove the comment. Let's say table. Like I said, it's a string. And the name is image underscore path. Now let's also add our down method. So let's say table. And what we want to do for down is to drop column. And what we want to drop is the image underscore path. So what this allows us to do is to add a new column without rolling it back. So let me show that to you. Let's go to iTerm. Let's say PHP artisan migrated. 
our migration has been added. Now, if we go to MySQL, hit the arrow up and select everything from cars, you can see that we added a new column right here called image path. Now we're ready to go to our controller and work on our image upload. Let's close off the migration and the create that blade. Let's open our cars controller and let's go to our store method. Before we do anything, let's get rid of our request validated. And let's DD the request all, just to see what will happen if we submit an image. And before we continue on, in the last video, we talked about form requests and we changed the request to our create validation request. Let's change it back to request for this video. Now let's go to our UI, refresh it. Well, we actually need to add an image. So let's open a new tab and go to Pixabay. Let's write down Mercedes. And you can choose whatever image you want. It really doesn't matter. I'll open this one. All right, free download, download it. I'm definitely not a robot. And if I sound like one, just let me know. Download it. All right, mine has been placed on my desktop. So let's close off this tab because we don't need it. Let's choose a file. So it's on my desktop. Let's give it a brand name of Mercedes. Founded in 1918. Description is this is my Mercedes. And be aware we're DDing. So we're not adding a new car. Submit it. And right here, you can see that there is a token, so the underscore token that has been sent to the request object. We have the name, found it, description, and the image. Now, if we open our image, you can see a lot of information regarding the image that we just uploaded. And I'm not going to cover every line of code that you see right here, because most of the things that you're seeing on the screen speak for itself. All right, before we process our image, save it and show it, you always need to validate it. So let's go back to our controller. Let's get rid of our DD. Let's say that we have our request and we want to validate. So what we need to validate is an array. So brackets, single quotes. We want the name from our UI, which is the image. And let's add some rules to it. First thing that we want to say is that it needs to be required because we always want to have an image. So pipe, then we want mimes or memes. I actually don't know how you pronounce it the right way in English, so correct me if I'm wrong. But this basically means the image extensions that we're going to allow. So let's say JPEG, comma, PNG, comma, JPEG. And we could add one more rule, and that's the max. You need to be aware that the max needs to be in kilobytes. So let's say 5048. I know that in the last video, I showed you how you could remove pieces of validation that you do on multiple places. But for the sake of this video, I want to keep my validation right here. Before we continue on, let's actually add our name, which is a required field as well. We have our found it, which is a required field, pipe, integer, pipe, the minimum value is zero, and the max is 2021. And we're basically repeating ourselves right here, but don't worry. We have our description, which is a required field as well. So what we're eventually going to do right here is returning an instance of Symfony's upload file. And that might actually be something that really doesn't make sense if you're a beginner of Laravel or Symfony's framework. But Laravel's framework is based on Symfony's framework. Right now, we're using Symfony's upload file class, which will allow you to easily inspect and manipulate a file. Now, there's an entire list of methods that we could use, and I want to show them to you. So let's go right above our validate. Let's say methods we can use on the request. And to show it to you, Let's create a new variable called test and let's set it equal to the request file. We are getting the file from input name and right behind our file, we're going to add our methods and I will add them as a comment as well. The first one is guess extension. So right after our file, let's say guess extension. So right below our variable or well, the line of code that we have, let's DD variable test. Let's save it. Let's go to Chrome, refresh the page. 
and this will show us the extension of our image. And in our case, it's JPEG. We could also get the mime type or the meme type again. So let's say get mime type. Let me copy it, replace it, save it, refresh the browser. And as you could see, this will tell you what type it is. So whenever it's a document, it will say it's a document, an uh, image. Well, what we have right now, an uh, image or whatever. So we have a couple store methods. So let's say the normal store method, the S store method, and the store publicly, publicly. And we will be using the store method in a moment. So I won't cover it right now, but these are basically different type of store methods that we could perform. Now there's another method, which is called the move method. And we will be using this one in a second as well. So the next method is the get client original name. And what we eventually want to do is to allow an image to be uploaded with whatever name. And then we need to change that name to something unique. And that can be done with a get client original name. So let's replace it, save it and refresh the browser. And you can see the current image name that we have. We could get the entire meme type. So get client mime type, replace it, refresh the browser. And this is pretty much the same as the guest extension. It will say that it's an image JPEG. To only get the extension without the file name and without the dot, we could say guess client extension. Copy it, replace it, refresh it, and the output is a JPEG. We could get the size of our image with the get size method. Typo get size. Replace it, refresh the browser, and this is the current size in kilobytes. And there are a couple methods to validate. So we could basically see if there is an error with the get error method. Let's replace it, refresh it, and the output is zero. So whenever you upload a file that does not have the right extension, it will return true or false. And in our case, we're uploading an image. So the output needs to be zero because it's correct. And the last method that we have is the is valid method. Replace it, refresh the browser, and this will also return true or false if it's the right extension or not. All right, now that I've showed you all the methods that we could use, we're ready to create our application. So let's get rid of our DD and our variable. And right after all of our checks that we're done, we could create a new variable. So let's say new image name. We need to create a new name. If you're going to work on large applications, you don't want people to add an image with the same exact name. Now to fix this, we could do a lot of different things. And I'm not saying that I'm showing you the best way, but I think this is the most favorite way. We could set our variable equal to the time method, concatenate a dash. So in single quotes, a dash, concatenate the current name that has been entered inside our input field, concatenate it with a dot because we're going to add the extension after. So let's say dot request image extension. So what we're doing is adding the time dash the current name that has been added with the image followed by the extension. Now, once again, before we continue on, let's DD it once. So new image name, save it, Chrome, refresh the page. And the current name is a timestamp dash mercedes.jpg. And to be honest, this looks kind of decent. So what is the next step? Well, now that we have a new name, we need to store the image. And this can be done in various ways. You can store it inside the storage. What I want to do is to keep it pretty simple and store it in the public folder. So right after our variable, new name, new image name, excuse me. Let's say request image. And right now we need to move it. 
like I just said, the move method. So this takes two params. The first one is the location. So let's say public underscore path, which is a method which go right inside their public directory and it will search for inside single quotes, a folder called images, which we don't have yet, but we will create it in a second. Now the second param is the image name. And like we have right here, it's called new image name. So let's paste it right here. Let's save it and let's create our folder first. So let's scroll down to our public directory. Let's create a new folder called images. And once again, this may sound silly. Be aware that the name that we're passing inside our public underscore path method needs to be equal to the folder name inside our public directory. So before we test it out, let's debug it one more time to see what's inside this line of code. Let's set it equal to test. Now let's change our DD to test, save it, go to the browser, refresh it. And you can see a lot of information right here. And it's just basic stuff. It's the current path of our images directory, the file name, the extension, the real path, so the path from our users directory, and some other non-informational stuff. So this is it. Let's remove our DD. Let's get rid of our variable. Save it. Refresh the browser. And whoops, we're getting an error message right there. So let's see what's going on. Whoa, I made a typo right here. Refresh it. So how do we fix this? Well, that can be done inside our model. So let's go up. Let's open our models and car.php. And as you can see, we have a protected fillable. So we're saying what needs to be filled, but our image underscore path is not in here. So let's add it. Let's say image underscore path. All right, save it. Go to our controller because the last thing that we need to do is to add it in our create method. As you can see right here, we have our name found it, but we haven't added our image. Let's say image underscore pad is equal to, well, we're not going to grab it from the request, but we just want to pass in the new image name variable. Save it, go to the browser, refresh it, and our Mercedes car have been added. Now, what about the image? If we go to our database, select everything from cars again, you can see that it has been indeed added to our database. So where is it stored in the UI? Well, we created the images folder. So let's go to our public directory right here, excuse me, images, and let's open the image and it has been added. So let's close it off. Now the last thing that we need to do is to print it in our UI. So you, know, you could either print it out right here, but I think it looks better if you print it out on the Mercedes page. So what we could do is to go to our UI. So the show.blade.php right above our name. Let's create an image tag. Let me align it on the line below. Give it a source of Laravel. Let's open the asset, which will look inside the public directory. And let's add the path of images forward slash concatenate our car access operator image underscore path. Save it and let's test it out in the output. And our image has been added. So let's give it a class to style it a little bit. So let's set the class equal to W dash 40. So width 40 margin bottom is eight shadow dash Excel. Save it. Refresh the page and this does not look good. Well, let's change it to 10 forward slash 12. Save it, refresh it, and it could be a little bit smaller. So let's say 812. Refresh it. The UI really doesn't matter. So I'll keep it like this. This was it for this video where I showed you how you could create a simple image upload in Laravel. In my opinion, there's way more validation that you could do. But the basic validation of Laravel is awesome to start with. If you do like my videos and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.